stop sign. Ice cold in the shop here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> sweet gloves. Are actually something that if you come here to take a class, you're going to get to experiment with. Pretty sweet. But can't tell you about them now. Well, it's the experimental show. It's a beautiful weekend here, and this is a pre-recorded show, so we hope that whatever time it is you're watching this show, whatever time it is right now for us in your time, it's a good time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be experimenting really. with some class designs. Okay. And Michelle wanted to talk and show off a few different things that have developed throughout the process of this particular class that you could take at the Glass Academy. So the Percola Reed is a class we made up. How many people know Dale Chihuly? If you think of Dale Chihuly Dale. and all those reeds, it's our own version of that. It's called a Percola Reed. We've done many sculpture jobs with reeds like this in them, but we always want a version that we can have at home. I'm looking at that sculpture by your desk, those early ones too. Oh yeah. Right? So we developed the Percola Reed because we really like the glass and how it looks in plants. So we've done all kinds of different styles and colors and techniques. But one of the things over the years is we've had it on this metal stake and this one's nice and rusty. This one goes in the front of my house. But what happened is through the winter and stuff, it will come off this pole. So as re-glued, I'm gonna stick it in the front of the yard but then some of the things that are happening is if I'm by a tree root, I can't push this down as far as I want. So let me show you another example of that. Oh yes. In this giant crucible over here, we have some larger ones, but this one being a shorter rod, it's not actually super stable because it's heavy. So we've got them in this planter box. They're ours. Uh, here's a, a student one, like if you come take a class, you'd make one that would look like this. And then this one's when? pretty cool. When, last year or a few years ago? A few years ago. Okay. This one's pretty cool too, but you have to put it in a garden setting that's, you know, the plants are tall. This wouldn't look good by like a low lying plant because even in this, you'll notice how it rises above and you see the metal stake. And what's up with this one? I don't know, I was just gonna say, why is this in here? <laughs> I don't even know. Super and then tall. like, here's a little baby one, but it's hidden back here, you don't even see it. So, so, I think what Michelle's saying is that they're not that easy to get the proportions correct and for the correct setting. When we're doing half the work, you're putting them in your home and without having maybe the tools to customize them and get them to fit exactly where you want it, it was a beautiful product and a beautiful class, but it needed a little bit of experimentation. And that's what we did. And we've been doing the experimentation for the past two weeks on this class. And we're gonna show you the results of that experimentation. We found a much better way. We tested it out last year. Weren't 100% satisfied with the final result. And so here we are now with the satisfactory the result. final results. So this is a Percola Reed. If you take the class, look at that, that, you will make something like that. We're gonna go over color patterns in the experimental show today. But now, here's the fun part. It's a copper tube. Copper tube, folks, it's last. not a solid rod. You, you could push that in the ground, but what we suggest could. instead is to put this in your yard. If it's a house plant, you could just toss it right in there, boom, like that, right in your plant. And I have a couple of those at home and it works great. But Michelle's also saying, what about this wood dowel rod? Found at any hardware store, Michaels. How do you spell dowel? D-O-W-E-L. D-O-W-E-L, so it is dowel. But you put the dowel rod in there. <laughs> <laughs> dowel. And look at that. <laughs> now it's higher. It sits beautifully. Or, if Jumbo you want to put it in your yard where maybe you have tall grasses, like how cool is that? Yeah. Right? So you dig a little hole and you put this down and then you can put this on top. Uh, these will last all winter long. In fact, they look really cool when snow's around them um, or it's raining. So that's the copper tube. 
And then you saw on Tuesday we made a jumbo one because we're going to put this on the hillside. If you're a little <laughs> loco, you could put one right on the hillside. <laughs> <laughs> now look at this one. Whoa, it's a little top heavy. It's a oh, little bit of a wobbler. That like 12 feet? Yeah, I'd say it's about 12 feet. It's like a, instead of a flagpole, you have the percola reed. Yeah, <laughs> flying dun, dun, the percola dun. reed out front. <laughs> Pretty darn cool. So that's that deep, beautiful recycle blue. If you saw us on Tuesday's show, that was a pretty interesting one to set that in the furnace and start turning it from all the way back here, not even being able to see what's inside the furnace and gathering up as much as you could. It was pretty hardcore. So we're just gonna let this guy settle down on the table here a little bit. Yeah, and if you guys aren't local and ever come to Metro Detroit, you can come by. We save all these items. They're on the experimental shelf, so you can see all the items that we made from the different show because people always ask. So we're going to make a couple of them to show you the process. And this is not going to be just an example of the class. You're going to see kind of how it goes together and how we make it. But it's going to be also an example of the color uh, patterns that we work with and the way we experiment with the color patterns. So just take a look at that. I'll kind of point out some of the things you would do as a student. But this will be a little more about the as much as we experimented with that style and finally found out that these perfect beauties work perfect and stick into the glass, then you've got to think about color. And we've done this class a few times before, even before my time at the studio. So we wanted to make something new that we haven't done before, a new style. And Michelle might be blowing glass with big student. mittens on. No, I'm the student. I'm going to have this copper pipe. And after I do the read, Jake's going to do this special thing, and I get to decide exactly how this works. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It's a really satisfying finishing move to stick that rod in there, and it sticks perfectly into the glass. It holds its shape. So we'll explain that as we do it, but who's starting one up? You want me uh, to do one yeah, with the mold? I want you to do one with the mold, and I'll do the one with the color on the outside. So, so I'm going to show you guys the mold that we use for the class. I know this is a brand new uh, mold and a new style of class texture to the reeds because I bought this mold maybe four months ago. We don't have a mold like this with this many ribs and with this pointed shape to it here at the Glass Academy. It's a 24 point mold so it's more ribs, tighter ribs, more pronounced and it looks really beautiful with a little bit of optic swirl. So you're going to see that go down right now. We're going to test it out with our red color. And this is a cool class because you get to do a lot of shaping of the glass. Once you take your gather, a lot of this is on you to be shaping it up for the mold. And some people say they're nervous, but it's like, don't be nervous. There's no right or wrong. It's just good. So we'll I, coat it in red. I was gonna say, I'm really amazed on how many people say they're nervous, but yeah. yet they're here to take a class. That's it, good. I mean, I guess it's like skydiving. If I did skydiving, I'd be nervous. Pushing yourself out of your comfort it. zone. Yeah. So another beautiful thing about these, and all three of these are encased. Michelle's going to show you a different color pattern she thought up. But this is the one that we've got for the class now. We've picked out a beautiful select color arrangement. And you encase this. You can do it on the outside if you want. But I highly suggest encasing the glass so that you see if this yellow one, if you zoom on that one, Uncle Dennis, see how the color stops right here. It's got clear on the outside, and when you have those optics and the sun is shining on this piece in your garden or in your home through the window, the light picks up so well with all that clear around the color and amplifies everything going on in there. Well, the other thing is we do a different style every year. There, this is the only style for this year. Right. So then we go for a second gather. We want to have enough glass to make a beautiful, tasty reed. So there it is right there. And we're going to start to shape it up a little bit. We do the back end, we do the front end. You want to prepare it for the mold real good. I know and Uncle for Dennis this is part, zoom. for the class, I think that you do this part, correct? Yep, we're having students actually shape it up like this for the mold which is pretty cool. A lot of students never get to use this much glass and feel that on the Marva table. It's a really interesting feeling and it's a lot more difficult than it looks. 
And we're there to guide you along. It doesn't mean you can mess it up. We're watching you, we're making sure it goes smooth, but it's a really fun thing to experiment with that a little bit, see kind of how it goes. So then we go into the mold. This is where the instructor, whether it's Nick, Nevin, or myself, will take this, drop it into the mold, give it a little squish for the texture, boom. There's our texture. And we want to move fast at this point because once we have our core heat starting to cool down from the mold, we're going to have treachery afterwards if we don't uh, keep that temperature nice and hot. So then we take it over here and I sit right on my mic monitor and you pull <laughs> it out like that. Then you give it a start to the neckline and then I'm going to give it a heat and this is where all the magic's going to happen on the next one here. So the color inside is this red. It looks orange only because it's hot. And uh, you won't see the true color until it's finished, which won't be today. So then you guys are going to grab it with the tweezers and you're going to hold as we spin and you're going to pull it out, pull it long, pull it crazy, and then maybe give it a little bit of some craziness like that. And we get off this extra piece, we toss it at Uncle Dennis. What I really like about these is that clear on the outside. So this one's red, it would look super cool in a patch of yellow flowers. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you kind of, you can think about where you want to have it in your home or you just, many people do two or three classes so that they get a variety of colors and they don't just have one. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. We don't sell a lot of Percola reeds. We like to have you make them. So in doing a class, when you come back for a second or a third class, you kind of have that confidence and you got the know-how to go in there and make the moves you want to do at the right time. People love going for a second class. And you guys get to use the torch. You melt out the tip like that so it's nice and smooth so you don't poke your eye out when you're looking at your plants. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Not fun. Now we're going to get the knockoff, and this is where things get cool. This is a different part of the class, where so we're going to knock it off into the vermiculite over here. And we're going to tap it down in there so it's sitting right side up, and then we're going to take a gather of glass, and I'm going to cut a nice, even glob of glass on there, and then the student with flaming glove, I don't know if she showed that off, flaming glove in hand, whether it's your right hand or your left hand, is gonna take one of our pre-cut copper tubes and jam it down into the hot molten glass so that it goes inside the reed and in the outside and it sticks right in place. Pretty cool. So it looks like you have a lot of copper tubes here. You're all ready for class this weekend. That's right, been cutting them all week. It's honestly a huge forearm workout. Nice. So here we go. This is a cool looking one. So I go up and down with it. I'm gonna wiggle it into the vermiculite. That holds it nice and sturdy. I'm gonna tap the pipe. Go for some clear. I'm Save practicing. Time. What? I said I'm practicing. That's the motion. You got it. Then we're gonna go for this guy right on top. One quick cut, Michelle comes in right away, does a full squish down. Oh yeah, I can feel it Just like solidify. Like that. And it sticks right in there. And look there at the is. smoke oh, coming out the top, it's cool. super cool. We're also gonna see this, the copper start to change color here as it Heats grabs up. all that heat, here it comes. It's a pretty beautiful process actually. It took some figuring out and took, uh, a, it year? took uh, <laughs> a year, it also took opinions from multiple staff and Chris and Michelle and myself, but we finally got it figured out and we're pretty happy with the process. So let me give that a little tap. All that vermiculite we can brush off with yeah, the brush. Yeah, that'll all clean off. There it is, a little smoking percola reed. Uh -huh. Get that puppy away. Bright red it is. Into the annealing box. 1,000 degrees, the elements are glowing in there. You do not want to touch that with the grandma grabbers because you will be electrocuted. A 
That's why we handle that. Yeah, that would be a bad thing. Yeah. All right, but that's turn? the class. Yeah, your turn. Pretty okay. cool, folks. And if you got questions about that, let us know. But we're going to have pictures doing a photo shoot. Actually, as this video is happening, we're doing a photo shoot of all the new styles. Yeah. So you will see those pictures posted, and all the class dates will be reiterated. So here goes Michelle. Oh, so I'm doing it on the outside. i got to think about how much I'm gathering. Think about it now. So clear glass. Going into the Rojo. This is on the outside this time. Once she gets a satisfactory amount of red, she's gonna go for the black dots right on top. See them laid out on the table there. Well, if I went right now, it is not hot enough for those dots to stick. So not juicy enough. Into the furnace we go. Hope everybody's got a beautiful uh, Sunday going on. I spoke about on the Anila reveal, the uh, gallery opening that I'm going to be at today. It is in uh, West Bloomfield, Michigan. A lot of local glass artists showing off their work. And here what we are have, showing squids? off our work. Squid. Multiple squid. So she's melting in those sweet dots there. She gave herself some room, moved the dots away to give herself some room on the marver to squish those in. So they're not texturous. She's melting them in, then she's going to squish them in, then she's going to pull out and start to shape up the reed. Here goes the squish down. It's a pretty good dance move, too. Oh, yeah, you know how they used to have the lawnmower? We could do one called the squish down. The squish down. Glass blowers dance. She's really setting it up. Are you going into the mold, or are no, you just setting it up real good? I was good? just giving myself a little tip. Just thinking about the squish down move. But I am going to sit down at the bench next. Very good. She's going to the bench, folks. To the bench she goes. So I wanted the dots to stay straight. I could twist it but I'd prefer the dots to stay straight. Well, she's got the neckline. She's going for the pull here. I actually, I'm gonna wait just a touch. Now, if I had the glory hole, it would be easier just to heat that top section, but I don't. With the furnace, it's a little trickier to heat. Yeah, today we weren't blowing glass before the show, so we elected to not uh, turn on the glory hole just for the smaller show here today because it's a lot of gas. To let that thing heat up for an hour before the show, to only do a half hour Is show. Is the compressed air on? No. Nope. This is a dance. This is a dance. It's almost looking like a snake, which we got to keep uh, prototyping. We do. So the trick is... The trick is because that uh, heating in the furnace, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I pulled it right off that. So, will you knock this yep. up? Oh, come on now. Nice. All right, you want to torch that? Yeah. Yeah, so this was a little tricky because of the having to heat in the furnace. But that's okay. What's the difference with the furnace? I don't think they know what, why it would be maybe well, different. Well, it can't be a centralized heat. The whole thing heats up, and you want to centralize the heat. You only want to heat certain areas. Yeah, she's saying that the the hole over here is hotter, and you've got this door opening that's rounder, and you've got the yoke to balance the pipe on so you can only heat the tip of it. She's got to, if she wants to balance it and only heat the tip up, she's got to use her left hand in front of the heat and hold it there. And it's really hard to get just half of the piece hot as opposed to getting the whole thing hot like she did there. So it pulled out a little different than maybe she was expecting, but it's still a super cool piece. Yeah, it'll be fine.
little extra twist, a little extra curl. It's almost looking a little pigtailish. It is. All right, so that's the tricky part. We putting a copper tube on this one? We are. All right. The other thing is it's going to be tricky because it's so hot, it's so long. I, I know what we're going to do. I well, got I, I would wait a sec to put that in there. It's still pretty hot. You got some diamonds or you want the tweezers? Um, you can put the diamonds around it. She's curling it in, corkscrewing it in there. Nice. Right. So you got the pipe, you got your glove on? I got my glove on. These things are cozy. I like this a lot. Here comes the clear. Let's see what happens. Man, these things are cozy. Bet you could blow glass in these. People always ask about wearing gloves with the pipe. You're holding it. Where there's a will, there's a way. I want to test it and hold it for a long time and see what the heat's like, so I'm confident with customers that it's going to be okay. I wonder if you could put it away in the annealer with those on. They would never hold it this long, and I'm feeling totally fine. Well, here comes the smoke. Do you want to put it in the annealer like that? Yep. <laughs> I got it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> It does. I mean, they're not burning. It's not sizzling. It's actually doing pretty well. I don't want to set it down and have it slump too much. They're getting a little warm now. A little bit of a wiggle on this one. Yeah, they're getting warm now. So those are Ooh. actually really good pieces to have for the experimental show in terms of showing the color, what it looks like encased and not encased. So we'll put a little plant on the display shelf and we'll put both of them in there. So that'd yeah. be cool. A-OK. <laughs> -okay. Sounds great, folks. So that's okay. the experimental show. The one thing I wanted to show off before we get done is the other experimentation we're doing with our new class. It's going to be coming up. Should I tell them about it? Is that OK? Yeah, you go tell them about that and I'm going to check in with the Leafs. We're going to have a really cool summer not around the glory hole, not around a ton of heat, but a really cool summer class here in the shop with some really cool color pieces that we've never before used in a class. Everyone always asks, you look down at the knockoff station, oh, can I have that little broken piece that was a part of my mug? Or, oh, that little gem looks so cool. And we say, I'm sorry, it's gonna explode. You can't have that. And it's sharp and it's no good. So now what we're doing for this class is we've taken all the coolest pieces from our knockoff buckets. We've slumped them down so they've got a flat side to them. This one is so cool. Uh-oh, this one's cool. It's like a Hershey's Kiss. Super cool. So now they've all got a flat side. They're not sharp. Look at this one here. And we're going to pour, have you choose your concrete your size, you're going to mix some color maybe into the pigment, some pigment into the concrete, and you're going to pick out a selection of mosaic glass shards that you're going to put into your ceramic mosaic tile for your garden, for your home, wherever you may want to put it. Yeah, and like someone was talking like a memorial piece for their like kitty or something like that. It's going to be really cool. I'm super excited about it. So many different colors, different sizes too. Uncle Dennis, if you look in here, it's hot, so don't go too deep. We've got the small size slump. Look at all these little gems and beautiful pieces that we just slumped. These are yeah, all going to be available. That's hot in there. Don't you need to take the brick out and let it like... If they're super tiny. I want to use them today. I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm just going to let them cool down on their own. <laughs> all righty. But... I hope you all are getting excited about that because in the middle of the heat in the summer, not many people are interested in taking a class in front of the glory hole. So this will be a way to get into the studio, be artistic, work with the glass you've seen us use, and it should be a really cool time. All right, thanks everyone. So that's that. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you at the Janus Gallery in West Bloomfield, and we'll catch you on Tuesday for the gathering point. We're Live at 6 o'clock. Snail pre-sales start. That's right. Get your Ooh. snail pre-sales ready. Okay. Thanks all for right, tuning in. All right. In.